Welcome to The Fifth in a series of short videos explaining Mojib Stars, the online travel planning tool available free to all Hampshire local authority and Southampton City Council schools and academies. There has recently been a major overhaul of Mojib Stars, so in this video we will be looking at the changes that have been made to the system. So firstly, when you now log on, there is the option to reset your own password. So you can click on forgotten password and it will ask you to enter your email address and you will be sent instructions on how to reset your password. Once you have logged in, you will arrive at your school's landing page where you'll notice a few changes. Firstly, you will see that the school tab has in fact um, been replaced by a site tab. Now you always need to click on this to get back to your main landing page and it will also get you to the toolbox where you have the COGS menu where you can add new information. Now what we will do is look at each of the tabs where changes have been made but it is worth noting that the STARS system has been upgraded to enhance your travel plans and enables you to add more information but this additional information is not required for accreditation. So firstly, let's have a look at the introduction tab. You will see there is now a, an option to add a logo for your school. And moving down, you will also see you have the opportunity to add in different times uh, each day that your school site is open and it may be that um, there are certain days when it closes later because you've sublet that your premises for you know either different clubs coming in in the evening but you can actually record those um, times there now and also at the weekend and also there is a news section here uh, where you have the opportunity you can add a site plan of your school and site photos, you've got a photo here, uh, and other drawings and, it may, and plans because it may be that you may have made some changes to the school building, so you could uh, put plans up of, of that, or it may be that you've made some changes to the accesses, or you perhaps have done um, some landscaping on the school site. So you could do a before and after plan uh, and site plans. There's also the opportunity to uh, list details of who if anybody else occupies the site with you, it may be that there's a preschool or you might be on the same site. If you're a junior school, you might be on the same site as an infant school. Uh, who owns the site? It's either possibly going to be Hampshire County Council or Southampton City Council. You could put details of the size of your site and any other information you want to put on there about the school site. So going back um, to look at the travel and transport infrastructure tab. Now there's a whole, you've got all the previous information that you may have added all about the um, different parking spaces, different access uh, routes to your site. But there's a whole new section on car travel uh, where you can add more detailed information about parking and also uh, a whole section on fleet vehicles. But I think it's worth bearing in mind that STARS is also used by businesses where this type of information will be more applicable. So going back to the tabs, uh, you will see that there is a new tab called Aims and Objectives. So if you click on the pencil icon in the toolbox, this will give you the opportunity to add information about your aims and objectives for your travel plan. So if you press on the information button here, um, it just gives you a little bit more explanation that the aims of a travel plan should reflect broadly what you want to achieve. And it gives an example, the main aim could be to manage school travel in a safe and sustainable way. And obviously to achieve your aim, you need to have some objectives to help you do this. And it could be that you're looking to perhaps reduce traffic outside the school gates um, and encourage more people to walk, scoot or cycle to school. So increase active travel, uh, looking at health and well-being of your pupils. Uh, and also um, you're looking at the safety. It may be that you're, you want to encourage improved safety outside the school gates for those who are looking to walk, cycle or scoot to school. 
Now, going back to your landing page, you will also see that Working Group, if we click on there, now has its own tab because um, before it used to get lost amongst other information. Um, and this is where you can, all those involved in your travel plan could be listed. And um, if you're using pupils, if you're adding pupils, just make sure you put them in as JRSOs, Junior Road Safety Officers or School Council. You wouldn't put pupil names in there. And as before, this area, will get, this section gives you the opportunity to add information about how the working members of the working group have been involved in the work that they have done towards your travel plan. So going back up again. Now there's a new tab. See previously, um, if you click on here, student travel modal shift, this is, these are the results of your annual hands up surveys. You've always been able to see them in a table format. Um, now there is a new tab where you can see it in a graph format. And it's probably a bit clearer to see how um, the modal shift has changed over several years, looking at it in the graph format here. And the good news with this school, it shows a clear reduction in those traveling to school by car, which is always good news. So just going back to the landing page, and if we go and have a quick look at the COGS menu here, um, there's some new information sections. Uh, so let's quickly look at these. First of all, add funding secured. Um, this is where you can add information on any funding your school has been given to enhance your travel planning activities. Uh, it may be that a parish council or town council have given you some funding to, to put some new gates up, to maybe create new paths in the school. Uh, any, any forms of funding, really. You can put the information here, add the information here. And then going further down the list, um, there's a new section called Add New Gold Testimony. Now, th this is for schools that are looking to achieve gold level accreditation and if, the, if you are one of these schools you now need to provide a testimony that justifies why you should receive STARS gold standard accreditation and that this needs to be based on the initiatives that you have uh, done in school and also the impact what you know what they've actually achieved so that's a new section if you're going for the gold standard accreditation. And also there is a new section here, if I click on here, called Add New Monitoring. And this is where you put information in about any bikeability training that you have done in school. Now there's a, a, another section here um, where you can generate a walking bubble map. In fact, we have a whole new video. The previous video covered um, how you would do this. And there is also a guidance note in the guidance list up here, how to create a, a walking bubble map. But basically, bubbles encourage families that travel by car to park at least five minutes away from the school. But this is where, how you would generate your own one for your school. Now, there's a whole new section here called new planning application. So I just click on there. And this is where, say, for instance, your school has a planning application in at the moment or has had previously, you can add information about this, you know, all the details of the planning application. You might want to add plans, um, any other information about it. It may be that you had changes uh, in the time school was open. And it just basically, you can give lots of details about a, a, perhaps a planning application that you have submitted. Finally, there is a new section called Set Parent Site. And, and this section is intended for groups of schools or sites. So, for instance, what is HOPE? So, say, for instance, you have a, um, a cad an academy school who, and then there are several other schools that are under its umbrella. It's hoped on the travel planning site for the academy school that all the other information relating to travel um, from the other schools, will all, you'll be able to look, view it 
from the parent site. Um, this feature isn't currently working, but it's um, something that will be new for the future. And now it's actually also worth noting that in the guidance list, um, if you click on there, there is you will find here that there is a new basic guide to working your way through the star system. This has all been updated. Now briefly looking at consultations, um, if you go to add a new consultation, so you go to the COGS, you go to add a new consultation, you will see that a few new ones have been added. So if I go to pupils, look at the different types, you'll see there's a new one called pupils monitor wow, so that pupils can now um, monitor the walk once a week. Um, and also there is another other pupil consultation and that also applies, there's also other parent consultation, other staff consultation, other senior management and governor's consultation, other residents, businesses and local com community consultation. So there's a few more consultations to choose from. Now under the initiatives, um, there is also a new initiative under public transport, which is PT11, um, which is hop off, get off two stops early. Obviously this applies to those who are travelling by bus, uh, rather than go the whole journey by bus, if they get off early and then they walk the last part, of, walk or scoot the last part of their journey. That's an option now as well. So we're just going to look at, if we go into the guidance list here, the changes to the system also include changes to the different accreditation levels. So we have a quick look at these now. Um, there is a new accreditation level called the green level and if you look at this if we go through this quickly um, you've got to still to achieve green level you have to include all the information about introduction um, it would be best to include you know a working group you've got members on the working group also you have to fill in information on the travel and transport infrastructure do your hands up survey and um, set a couple of targets. Uh, you have to have a minimum of two consultations, one travel and transport issue, which might be a parking issue, speeding outside the school, or another issue. Uh, but under the initiatives, you have to have 10 different travel initiatives, but they only need to be recorded as planned, and also five supporting initiatives. Again, only recorded as planned. You don't have to have achieved this to achieve your green level. Now going down to bronze, that has stayed the same. However, under the silver um, level accreditation, you now have to achieve a modal shift away from car use of several, you know, a few percent, but that has to be over a period of four years as opposed to it was previously three. And the same with the gold level accreditation, um, uh, the modal shift is required over away from car use over four years as opposed to three and also we've looked at the new gold testimonies that are required um, and but then there's a new uh, accreditation level called platinum and this is for schools that have achieved the gold level um, but to achieve platinum not only do they have to have achieved at least a 5% a modal shift away from car use, but also increased all other active modes of travel, such as walking, cycling, scooting, over a four-year period by at least 5% as well. So that's how you achieve a platinum level. So really, that, that is a summary of the changes. Um, thank you very much for listening. This is the end of the STARS 2021 updates video.